Hello again, and as promised, here is the continuation of my second video, How to do a ladies' jacket. You can see by now I've just ironed this color seam apart, and I also checked my whole jacket over, pressed the hem again, and also, meanwhile, I am the sleeve seam apart, the underneath seam, the other one was stitched over, as you might remember, because now we're going to stitch the sleeves in. And first of all, you have to think which is the right sleeve to put into my jacket, as that is not always so visible, especially on this particular one, where the underneath seam of the sleeve is not the same following as the side. So what do you do? First of all, take a sleeve, put your jacket the way that your bottom is down and your front is facing you. Leave everything on the left side of the material and put this sleeve there. So you see on the right side, you see the back sleeve. If I would put this one there, this would be wrong because that is the other side sleeve. So I check again. There is my piece, I now open it up, so I have the side seam facing me upwards and the shoulder is lying underneath. Now take the sleeve and check which way you will have to put this in. That means take the bottom seam, turn the sleeve around as you've just seen me, and just uh, Hold it a little bit. So you see there is your back seam on the back and the one from the sleeve. So that is correct for a start. But now we know in the particular pattern I had, and you might have as well, the seam is put in a different position. And when a seam is not the following from the side seam, it is by 99% or even more put towards the front so you see, if I put this there, this is wrong because my next marks that I have in my armhole or in my sleeve will not fit. Absolutely. So now if I pull this over to the right side, the sleeve, and put this little mark on top of my side seam, then I will be correct because the underneath arm seam now is towards the front. And just briefly, uh, approximately, check around there you see there is your upper cut for the shoulder, so that looks very good. That's the way for you to check if you got the right sleeve onto the right armhole. So I continue, there I see my next little cut that goes on top of each other, and there again is the underneath one. And that's exactly where I will start sewing now. So fold the side seam apart as you ironed it apart and put your little cut right on top of it exactly fitting and put it under your sewing machine and start sewing underneath the arm and you're stitching on top of the arm never on the main material you always got to be stitching on the sleeve now I'm leaving this armhole lie round as it wants to lie. I'm not pulling it straight. And immediately I look for farther on where I will have to go. But all the part underneath is not going to get any widths whatsoever. Always underneath the arm is straight. That's why now I check my cut for the shoulder together with my shoulder, and I can see right away the amount of widths I have to work into this. That is not so much. This is going to be no problem to get it in if you watch me how I'm going to be holding this now. But the first little bit, I will still stitch very flat without putting any widths in. So I do another four or five centimeters because there's also a mark, see, those fitting together. And there's no widths in whatsoever, because underneath the arm, you don't want no widths. That's totally wrong. No, you need a round shoulder, and to get the round shoulder, you need all the widths in that upper area of the arm, of the shoulder. So that is my completely widths, as you can see here. That's got to go in that part in now. So slowly I start there, but the main widths will go on the top. I'd only put a little bit in so far. 
And now I'm checking again. This is about three centimeters approximately, which I have to put in there. So again, the bottom I put all straight. And now I'm holding my left hand quite wide apart and pulling this material a little bit um, inside of the sleeve. Now watch me how I do this now. And I'm holding with all my fingers this width, or at least I try to hold it. One more finger would have been better than only four on that side there. But I only got four there besides my thumb that's underneath. So this width got to go in there to get exactly that cut on top of that shoulder. And if you hold this like that and slowly let the machine take the widths in, o occasionally lift your foot in between, but the needle has got to be stuck inside. Don't have it out because then you get zigzag stitching done, which you definitely don't want on a sleeve. It would give it a terrible fit. So slowly, bit by bit, as this is real time what you're seeing here now. I didn't speed this up or I didn't slow it down. I look underneath for the shoulder. Again, I put the seam apart as I ironed it apart. Now you see exactly there was my cut and there was my shoulder. And now on the other side of the shoulder, I got the same thing. I got to put some widths in the top there. So first I look towards the bottom. I'm putting this all flat on the bottom to see how much width I got to put in there. To repeat, if you just hold it like that, you see there's no width. That's how it's got to be right there. So I'm holding it there with one hand. I check again how much width is there. Again, this will be about three to four centimeters. I put the bottom really flat underneath. And again, I'm holding this very firm, not directly on the one centimeter seam that I'm doing, a little bit farther away with my fingers, with my hand, as you can see. So I'm like pulling it uh, about five, six centimeters away inside the sleeve. And because of that holding like that, it's really easy to get all the widths into it. And of course, if you have problems getting this in. I am there. I got a seam which got to be on the other side, then the same distance away as well. Um, if you do have problems getting the widths all in in the top in, then put some stitches in the round over the shoulder, over the sleeve part, and uh, do a ruffle and stitch it in then. That you can also do. Okay, here's my first sleeve right away in. Then before you get on to the next one, Check it. Check it over. Look at it from the proper side, from the right side, if you're satisfied with that. Otherwise, open a little bit up and do it again. But that looks fine to me. Maybe we put a little shoulder pulse, uh, polster in later on. We have to see how we continue with that later on. And it's got to fold nicely round like that. You can see that. That's exactly as I wanted it. Now it gets a bit easier because you got only one sleeve left, so you can't put a wrong one in. How easy is that? But again here, put your side seam up facing you. Shoulder is underneath. There's a shoulder, you know. Now you take your sleeve, and we know the seam has got to be slightly towards the front. So that's why I take my cut there right away. That's my front on the left. And I immediately put that little cut on top of my side seam because that seam from the sleeve is in the front end now. That's really easy. So I put that one under my sewing machine right now. Do a, ba a back and forth stitching there. And exactly the same. Hold this first part really flat. I mean, don't pull the sleeve on top or don't pull the bottom. Let the machine take both materials in as it wants, really straight. And after you've done a certain bit, then go and look for your shoulder and for your cut. So again, you know, how much width do I exactly have to put into that area? And then spread your fingers out, pull the material um, slightly back so you got all these nice little uh, widths 
exactly on the edge of the underneath part lying, edge on edge. And continue, same thing as what we did on the other side. And if you take your time doing this really slowly, always when you stop, make sure your needle is inside the material so you don't get this zigzag stitching, as I mentioned before, because that happens really quickly. And if you finished with uh, with both sleeves, then check this over again on the seam, which I will show you in a moment. I, th I think I did this on the German one, um, as I'm only talking over my German uh, video over here. So sometimes I don't quite remember. See now how I'm pulling this back into this position? Yeah, that's the way to do it. Try this once when you got a sleeve lying under your machine to stitch in. Because when you get to the last 10 centimeters on the bottom underneath the sleeve, underneath the arm, you should not, definitely not have any widths left over that you got to squash and squeeze into there. This really makes the sleeve look terrible. And sometimes when you see some men's jackets, even if they weren't cheap, you can often see how badly sleeves have been stitched in. It is terrible. So oh, here we go. Now both sleeves are in. Check the seam over. Very important. Look if it's really a straight line that you can see there. If it's not a straight line, stitch over again or change it so you are really satisfied with it then. Because that depends on how well your sleeve will be. Don't have any zigzag stitching there whatsoever. Then this will be nice. And then later we see if we might want to put a little um, a polster into the shoulder, which makes it also roll again better and fall, fold much better. All right. So our main material here is totally finished. And we can think about starting to work with the lining. I just show it to you hanging it on the doll. So you see my sleeve, how, although I don't have a pole stain yet, but it already uh, falls nice round. And there you see the back we put in earlier on. That's how I wanted it. I'm quite satisfied with that so far. And if you do it my way, you will be satisfied as well. So now we're taking our little um, slimming part here, which I explained to you on the cutting by first cutting it out roughly, the same with the interfacing, then sticking it on, and then cutting it properly out. So I told you I put some widths into the lining in the back. And I have these two cuts here. So do like a dart. Start exactly on top of your two darts, uh, sorry, on top of your two cuts, and do like a little dart stitching down the first two, three centimeters straight and then go sideways out like in a dart. That's the top and on the bottom we're going to hold this right away as well because it makes it easier for us for the next jobs later on. So take your one cut, fold it on top of the other one and put a couple of stitches in so that's held because that's the way we will iron it then as soon as we have the little slimming part in on the top. And that's what we're going to do now. I stitch that on as well, then it doesn't fold over to the other side and I don't need to worry to forget about putting it in the right direction. So here we go. When I cut this, I put in the middle on the top and on the bottom in the middle a little mark already. And we had some marks in the lining already which I put in from while I d was doing the cutting. And so this is going to be really easy to put this round little slip into here. So just start straight, everything lying straight there as you can see it, before you start moving it over around edge on edge. And that you have to do very slow. There's one mark and there's the other mark. You see him. So very slowly. Do it also bit by bit, bit. Don't try to to all pull it straight. That doesn't work. You can see my lining is slightly 
facing to the right side because that's the way the curve goes. And now I hold this very, very similar like I've been doing with getting the widths in the sleeve in, as you can see. And I only do like one or two centimeters in one go because all my cuts have to be on top of each other now. And here I'm already in the middle, that one I stitched down, so I don't didn't need to worry that I've got it in the wrong direction for my widths in the back. And I just continue, there's my next little dart, very slowly. Also, this is real time, what you're watching here now. This is not speeded up or slowed down because I want you to watch how I'm holding this with my hands so you see exactly what's happening. All right, that's the way this is in. All it needs now is being ironed flat. That's the preparation for the back, which I have to do before I will continue with this part on the overlook. Overlock, sorry. <laughs> okay. One more thing. Well, I have to uh, uh, prepare now. As I mentioned to you when I did the cutting, that on my um, facing here, I added three centimeters for the seam on the bottom. But on the lining, I told you, I only added one centimeter. The reason is if I cut it the same length, then I have the problem that uh, my lining probably will be showing out. So I did three centimeter cut for the seam on the upper material and one on this one. So what I do, I will fold this up on f four centimeters above the bottom of this uh, cut material, the main material, and the lining I fold over two centimeters. And when I fold this over, I will fold it over as if the two centimeters for that bottom is up there already like that. It's if because if I put it edge on edge, that would be wrong. You can see something funny is happening then in the lining. It's got to be lying like that as you see it now. And I put it on my four centimeters there. And I only put a couple of stitches in because later on I also do this on the overlock. I repeat again, if it's got to be this, even if that little part sticks over there, this is correct. Because if I do it the other way down, I would have later on when I put the lining in, I would have funny widths there, which I can't get rid of later. So have the lining lying across as if it's all the way uh, the two centimeters uh, lying over there and four centimeters on that part. If you cut it all in the same kind of uh, centimeters like I've been doing. So I'm only holding this there and I got to do exactly the same, of course, with the other side for the, the lapel part or the facing part there. So I fold it over two centimeters this part and I got to check, do I really have four centimeters on the main material down there sticking over because I did such a little cut there that I can hardly see it. <laughs> I remember that so I, I just measure it again to make sure yes this is my four centimeters there and I'm only holding this there in position which makes it very easy for my next job that I'm going to be doing because now I go with all those prepared parts that I got here onto my overlock to do the next job. Meanwhile, I'm ironed the back as you can see and I'm first of all going to put those little side parts onto my back piece. And everything you do, if you don't see which is left and right, don't forget to always make a pair of everything, as that is the case, what you need. So this is my second side of the back, our princess seam, as I mentioned before, what we call it. That means my back is finished now. Besides that, I got to go in ironing later on. That's always important. Do some good ironing in between. Now I got my lapel part here, my facing, where we just added that lining just a little bit on the bottom, as you remember, and I stitched that on 
all the way to the top. Same I got to do on the other side, of course. And you see, I always work in pairs and I'm always stitching on top of the little part or in this case on the uh, lining part. Now I will take the sleeves first of all and also there uh, mainly on a lining like that where you do not really see what is the left and the right side of the material. Um, make sure you do a pair. As you can see here I got my big part, the upper arm, lying on the bottom and I put the underneath arm, the little one, on top and I once started on the seam and now I'm starting on the top of the sleeve and that makes me always have a pair and not have to open some seams up again because I stitched them wrong together. So now I first of all iron these parts flat because it's so much easier to do before they're all been put together. Because now here I will close the side first of all and also here Start on the way you see this now. The back is on the bottom, the front is on the top. Go along the shoulder now and this is the way you should do it if you don't have a thread cutting on your machine. Continue with that shoulder. Meanwhile I iron that seam flat as well as you can see. And again go down on the side. That means you finish stitching your lining top part together already. That's how easy that was. Now we continue with the sleeve again. As you can see that first seam I ironed flat. And now you got to be careful. This one of the sleeves, it doesn't matter which one, you close the seam completely. And again be stitching on the small part, have the big part, the upper arm part lying on the bottom. The second sleeve, or the first one, one of them, you need to leave a hole for turning the jacket inside out. So first of all I check here on my complete length. I go out the machine out there and I go in again at a place that leaves me a hole so approximately I can get my hand through because that is that gives me a good amount of width to be able to uh, turn this jacket around. Okay, now I've also ironed these parts flat now and the, also the seam from the sleeve. And now we do exactly the same job as what we did before on the upper material. Again, the seam is not together, the seam from the sleeve is not together with the seam from the side. No, it's again laid forward, the seam is forward in the front. That means I started on my bottom seam but I put my little cut on and again I got all that width here again. So the first part I'm really doing flat without any widths putting in any of the parts but then after about 10 centimeters or being around the bottom curve I start holding the widths in so I will get my little cut really on top of my shoulder. And when I get to the shoulder now, as with the overlock, you cannot iron the seam apart. You have to lie it in towards one direction. And this direction for the lining should always be towards the back. That means you put your seam from the shoulder towards the back. And that means your sleeve is totally in. So, have you been watching what we got missing? Yes. You haven't been putting your upper color into this to the lining yet. Again, make sure you got a cut there for the shoulder and make sure you got those two cuts in the middle which are for the neck to put in and later also for the color to finish it off in our next video then. There, you're not going to be marking anything on this because all the marks you uh, did earlier on on your underneath color and on your actual jacket. So that is not necessary there, but the job will be exactly the same. So take your lining, look where your little cut is. If you can't see it well because of the interfacing being ironed on or the interfacing is standing a little bit over like on in my case here, 
then cut this so you can all see it very well and very good because otherwise your stitching will not be uh, exact. That's the way we got to put it in. So you put right side on right side on top of each other. And now if you don't know where to start, imagine that you have your one centimeter seam on both of those sides. And that is exactly your point where you should start sewing. So put the color in the right position, edge on edge, look where your cut is and think of this centimeter seam. And now do a very good stitching back and forth. And now, if you have good scissors and you like to do it my way, then take your very good scissors, go underneath and only cutting the material underneath, not the color. You, the needle is stuck inside the material. Turn it around and continue sewing. Now look right away, where is your seam? From the shoulder, lie it towards the back and put your little cut that you got there right on top of that seam and continue your sewing. Now look for the middle of the back. You see them both there. And again, edge on edge. And this is almost like a straight seam there. This is nothing big to talk about. You probably can do that even without me telling you. So here's my next shoulder. Again, I'm lying this seam towards the back, not towards the front. And already we're getting here towards the end. And again, you got to think of this one centimeter seam that you want to finish at. Because later on, for the next jobs, you need this one centimeter um, material sticking over. All right, there. I cut underneath in again, not the color. I'm turning my piece. The needle is stuck inside. That's why it makes it so easy to turn there when the needle is stuck inside. Otherwise, you don't get it correctly. I marked my little cut in again because it wasn't so visible. And again, I stitch. So I just have one centimeter left over and there's my cut. They got to fit together. And when you look at your little corners now from either side, they should look perfect like that. Now, again, as we definitely will iron this seam apart, you should put all the way along where, the, where it's quite round there, or you think it's round, you should put some cuts in. Otherwise, you will not be able to iron this apart very well, and it will always pull in that area from the right side, which you definitely don't want. So I got to iron this, and you could have put a little hook in there if you want to for hanging the coat up. Um, but on this little jacket, I didn't want one in there. I either throw it in a corner or I put it on a hanger anyway. You are, no, usually I put it on a hanger. So I iron this one apart, and then you've got all the lining and completely the upper material stitched, and you can get ready for the next job then. Just make sure you really iron everything well, and you will see this will become a perfect jacket which you love to wear, and everybody's going to say to you, where did you buy that lovely jacket? All right, I wish you a nice working day on some nice materials and on some nice clothes, and I hope you subscribe my channel and tell all your friends about it, because maybe they even would like to make a nice jacket, and I don't mind if I get some more followers. All the best. And I say goodbye. Tschüss.